Hi folks, it's me again, Rona Barber, your storyteller. And I've got a story to tell you today that's got a very strange title. It's told How to Fool a Cat, but it's also got a very strong message. And this story uh, is about, as often the case, uh, a division between very rich and very poor people. And in this case, this very rich man wanted to buy something to add to his collection. He had an incredible collection of sculpted animals and they were sculpted from wood, uh, stone, precious stones, you, you name it, he had them. And he had an animal, you know, a, a sculpting of every animal that you could imagine. But looking at his collection one day, he realized that he didn't have a little mouse. And he wanted to complete his collection with every animal that he knew of, so he had to have a mouse. So he put out a contest, if you like, to all the sculptors in the region to say, whoever can make me the best mouse, the most lifelike, it must be really lifelike, then I will give them five gold coins. Well, this was a tremendous amount for anybody. You know, this would have made somebody who was otherwise poor, this would have made them rich overnight. And sculptors, like most artists, tend to have good times and bad times. And there are very few of them rich unless they're world famous. But surprisingly, not a lot of people took up the challenge. And there was two reasons for that. One of them was that there would be probably quite a lot of people would enter the contest, each of them thought. And that cut the chances of winning. Only one person could win. And that meant you failed. And they didn't like the idea of failing. So only two sculptors ended up entering the contest. They were given a specific amount of time to produce this little mouse and it was to be life-sized as well. So it was only going to be a small sculpture but still to be done perfectly and done beautifully and look lifelike that was going to take a considerable amount of time. So the day came for them to come and produce what they had sculpted. And the first man came in and looking all pleased with himself and as if he'd already won, you know, and he placed a bag on the table in front of this rich merchant and said, I think I've got the winner here. Oh, well, time will tell, he said. And he opened the bag and took out a beautiful box, velvet lined, and inside the box was another little bag, brocade, all stitched with silk. Beautiful, beautiful thing. Just to look at the small bag was fantastic. He was obviously a craftsman. And he took from the bag a tiny little life-sized mouse, and it was perfect. It looked alive. It had little black bead eyes and it just looked perfect. Even its ears, because a real mouse, when it's in the light, its ears are almost transparent. And this was exactly the same with this little carved mouse. Oh, the merchant was well impressed. He said, that's absolutely wonderful. And he turned to the other man and he said, what have you brought me? And he brought from his pocket something wrapped in newspaper. And he opened up the newspaper and put it on the table. And it was just a, a lump of grey whatever. And it was obviously meant to look like a mouse because it had two little black beads stuck in for eyes. And it had two things stuck in its it supposed to be ears. And a twig for its tail. The merchant did not look amused. He looked really angry. And the man who'd carved the beautiful mouse started laughing. And he said, are you trying to make a fool of everybody or what? And the man said, no. He said, because I know when this is judged. And he turned to the rich man and he said, I'm presuming your cat is going to be the judge here. Because only he would be able to decide which mouse was most likely lifelike. And the rich man said, well, I hadn't really thought about that, but yes, I suppose you're right. 
well, the other man who created the beautiful mouse. This was great as far as he was concerned, because at least his looked like a mouse. But when the cat came along, it was a whole different ball game. It was a game changer, because he looked obviously attracted to the beautiful mouse, because it was shiny and looked really lifelike. But then he sniffed the air and looked at this grey mass that looked a bit like it was supposed to be a mouse. But he suddenly leapt on it, grabbed it and ran off with it. So the sculptor said to the rich man, well, I guess that's, you know, proof. Mine was the most like a mouse. And the other man was stunned. He said it didn't look anything like a mouse. He says, not to you, but you're a man. It did to the cat. He wanted it. And the rich man had no alternative but to agree and give him the five gold coins. But he just didn't get it. He says, you knew all along that the cat would choose your mouse. That's why you insisted on it being the judge. He says, what made you so sure? He said, oh, it's quite easy. He says, I carved my mouse out of dried tuna. Tuna that is dried, and this is quite a common thing in that country. They'll dry the fish until it's so hard it gets grated and it gets grated on top of, you know, posh food. It's a delicacy. Well, the man at first looked angry and then he couldn't help himself. He smiled and then he started to laugh because it was so funny. And then the next minute, everybody was laughing, even the man who had been beaten. His laugh didn't last as long, but nevertheless, he was amused at the very idea that this man had the tenacity and the temerity to, <laughs> to come up with this lump of grey fish and put it on the table as a mouse. But it did the job. So the lesson to be learned here is it doesn't matter what's being judged. It doesn't matter whether you're being judged for your ability as a musician or a painter or a dancer or a scholar, whatever. What does matter is it's not what you produce that matters nearly as much as who is judging it and what the criteria is. Remember that one. Thank you.